Well, we had some sparks flying in last night's GOP debate down in Alabama. Republican presidential candidates on stage wasted no time dogpiling on Nikki Haley soon after the fourth debate started. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis came out swinging against Ms. Haley, claiming she isn't a strong fighter for Republicans, while Vivek Ramaswamy compared Ms. Haley to a fascist. We have all the highlights for you. Joe Biden walked out of a news conference yesterday. After being asked about his involvement with the Biden family business, claiming his involvement was all based on lies. We got the response on that as well. Police shot and killed a suspected shooter who opened fire on the University of Nevada, Las Vegas campus yesterday, killing three, wounding another. And as you might imagine, this latest tragedy led to President Joe Biden to again call on Congress to take action. And an Ohio woman who was found guilty of throwing a piping hot burrito bowl in the face of a Chipotle employee had her jail time lessened after agreeing to a kind of unusual sentence from a very creative judge. I'll give you all the details on that too. And there's quite the controversy brewing in the Florida GOP. Have you heard this story? Florida Republican political circles were shocked last week when state GOP leader Christian Ziegler was accused of sexual assault against a woman with whom he and his wife, Bridget, had planned a three-way encounter with. Uh, if, if the name Bridget Ziegler is familiar, I'm going to tell you why. Welcome to today's edition of Just the Truth. Glad to have you join me in the Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit MyPhDWeightLoss.com. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. I wanted to name it the Joey Hudson Bill, but, you know, they don't allow you to name put names on bills, <laughs> but I wanted to call it the Joey Hudson Bill because I know, I know that one's been near and dear to you for a number of years. That's how it's done. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Republican presidential candidates on stage wasted no time dogpiling on Nikki Haley soon after the fourth debate commenced in Alabama. We have all the highlights, but first, police shot and killed a suspected shooter who opened fire on the University of Nevada Las Vegas campus yesterday, which killed three and wounded another. University police responded to reports of shots fired around 11.45 a.m. local time on the fourth floor of one of the residence halls near the student union building with campus alerting students to run, hide, and fight, saying this is not a test as the emergency alert went out. UNLV police and other officers responded to the scene. Officials said two campus detectives immediately engaged the suspect in a shootout outside of the building. UNLV police chief Adam Garcia told reporters at a press conference yesterday afternoon, the suspect was struck and is deceased at this time, he said. The suspected shooter is a 67-year-old career college professor with connections to universities in Georgia and in North Carolina, according to law enforcement sources talking to CNN. LVMPD Sheriff Kevin McCahill uh, said that the police have confirmed the identity of the suspect but are not releasing his name or had not as of last night. He also declined to reveal the suspect's affiliation with the, the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Three victims were found dead on the scene, and a fourth was taken to an area hospital with gunshot wounds where they were recovering in stable condition. Four others were hospitalized after suffering panic attacks, and two officers were treated for minor injuries suffered while clearing the buildings. The shooter's motive remains under investigation. The UNLV campus is about two miles from the Las Vegas Strip of and across the uh, Harry Reid International Airport. Roughly 30,000 students attend the school. The campus was placed on lockdown almost immediately after the shooting was reported. Police evacuated students and staff on campus floor by floor, room by room, building by building, the chief said. UNLV officials asked students to remain sheltered in place as the buildings were e evacuated at the time. The University of Nevada student told uh the a local KVUU outlet that she hunkered down in the campus's student union building after she learned there was an active shooter. Another student described how about 200 students had huddled together in the building as they heard gunshots ring out, stating, stating a lot of people 
were panicking. She said that armed officers evacuated them out of the building with their hands up as they were escorted out of the student union. She said that they walked past one of the windows. The window was shot out, glass everywhere. You know, I always find this this image to be so so rare or, or so unusual, I guess you could say, when you have these shooting instances and where the students are asked to come out of the buildings, again, hands up so that officers responding can see everybody's hands. But it also it, it is almost like a, a perp walk that, that these are that they're considered guilty uh, b- before they even know the identity of the shooter. And I, and I guess that's the whole point is not to take any chances. Uh, according to officials, a reunification center for those who had family members on campus was established at the Las Vegas Convention Center. Officials said that in addition to UNLV, all other Nevada system of higher education institutions in the southern part of the state were shut down for the rest of the day and will probably be closed down through Friday of this week. The UNLV shooting and Tuesday's two deadly shootings in Texas prompted President Biden to call on congressional Republicans to ban assault weapons. You knew that was coming, didn't you? The president in a statement said, Jill and I join citizens across our nation in praying for the families of our fallen and for those who were injured during these latest acts of senseless violence. For all the action we've taken since I've been president, the epidemic of gun violence we face demands that we do even more, but we cannot do more without Congress. Again, uh, asking Congress to take action on his, uh, what is it he calls it, common sense gun control? I've never quite decided what common sense gun control is, but uh, Joe Biden wants it. Uh, there have been 80 school shootings so far this year, according to a report by CNN, which they claim breaks last year's record of 79 over the same period. Of this year's school shootings, 51 occurred on K-12 through campuses, while the other 29 were at colleges or universities. So let's get to last night's GOP debate. It took place in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis came out swinging against Nikki Haley. Obviously, he knows that he's in this race neck and neck for second place, and so uh, and Nikki Haley is his fierce competitor. He claimed that she isn't a strong fighter for Republicans, saying that a leader has got to be willing to stand strong and fight for the people they serve, claiming that Nikki Haley has not done so. I have delivered results. That's what we need for this country. And you have other candidates up here like Nikki Haley. She caves any time the left comes after her, any time the media comes after her. I did a bill in Florida to stop the gender mutilation of minors. It's child abuse and it's wrong. She opposes that bill. She thinks it's fine and the law shouldn't get involved with it. If you're not willing to stand up for the kids, if you're not willing to stand up and say that it is wrong to mutilate these kids, uh, then you're not going to fight for the people back home. I will fight for you, and I will win for you. DeSantis cited legislation in Florida about transgenderism that he described as restricting the gender mutilation of minors and argued that she criticized that legislation. Haley then said that DeSantis DeSantis continues to lie about my record, she said, and explained that she previously criticized parental rights and education in Florida. She stressed that she previously said that the law didn't go far enough because it only talked about gender until the third grade, Haley said. Soon after the exchange, entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, he chimed in and blasted Haley, saying, uh, after you left the UN, you actually joined the board of Boeing, whose back you scratched for a very long time, and then gave foreign multinational speeches like Hillary Clinton. He said, I think that this is far more corrupt than I even imagined when I entered politics. Haley kind of shrugged it off and explained that she was proud of her work with Boeing. You know, Boeing does have a plant in South Carolina, in Charleston. Um, She uh, said that she left the Boeing board after they took a COVID-19 bailout. Haley uh, added of DeSantis and Ramaswamy to cheers. And in terms of these donors that are supporting me, they're just jealous, talking about the two other candidates. They wish that they were supporting them, she said. Soon after that, Ramaswamy followed up by comparing Haley to a fascist. He said, referring to recent comments that she made about social media, the only person 
more fascist than the Biden regime now is Nikki Haley, who thinks the government should identify every one of those individuals with an ID. Uh, Haley quickly quipped, I love all of the attention, fellas. Then Florida Governor Ron DeSantis uh, backed Ramaswamy up, saying, roll the tape. Here's the exchange. He what said, I, I want your name. She As president of the United said States, her first day in office, she said, one of the first things I'm going to do, I said we were going to get the millions want of your bonds. Name. She wants That's government she ID to dox every American. Saying. That's what, what she said. You can roll the tape. When I get into office, the first thing we have to do, social media accounts, Social media companies, they have to show America their algorithms. Let us see why they're pushing what they're pushing. The second thing is every person on social media should be verified by their name. That's, first of all, it's a national security threat. When you do that, all of a sudden people have to stand by what they say. And it gets rid of the Russian bots, the Iranian bots, and the Chinese bots. And then you're going to get some civility when people know their name is next to what they say. She said, I want your name. And that was going to be one of the first things she did in office. And then she got real serious blowback, and understandably so, because it'd be a massive expansion of government. Actually, we and- have anonymous speech. The Federalist Papers were written with anonymous And this is when, oddly enough, New Jersey Governor Chris Christie chimed in to defend Nikki Haley. That, I want to say something else. We're now 25 minutes into this debate, and he has insulted Nikki Haley's basic intelligence. Not her positions, her basic intelligence. She doesn't know regions. She wouldn't be able to find something on a map that his three-year-old could find. Look, if you want to disagree on issues, that's fine. And Nikki and I disagree on some issues. But I'll tell you this, I've known her for 12 years, which is longer than he's even started to vote in a Republican primary. (laughs) And while we disagree about some issues and we disagree about who should be president of the United States, what we don't disagree on is this is a smart, accomplished woman. You should stop insulting her. So I'm going to take this several times over. As you probably have read, seen, reported, I've talked with you about it here on Just the Truth. Haley has risen in the polls in key early states, and her campaign has claimed that she has the momentum roughly six weeks out of the Iowa caucuses. By the way, Governor Christie also took a shot at President Donald Trump, who, as you know, declined to participate in last night's debate. Christie believes that the only reason Trump is running again is to get back at his enemies. I mean, look, he's made it very clear. There's no mystery to what he wants to do. He started off his campaign by saying, I am your retribution. Eight years ago, he said, I am your voice. This is an angry, bitter man who now wants to be back as president because he wants to exact retribution on anyone who has disagreed with him, anyone who has tried to hold him to account for his own conduct, And every one of these policies that he's talking about are about pursuing a plan of retribution. And yet, at the first debate, my three colleagues on this stage, when asked if he would be convicted of federal felonies, would they still support him, raised their hand, looked into the camera, and let everybody know that they would still support him, even if convicted of federal felonies. Federal felonies, by the way. President Joe Biden calls a firestorm from his critics on social media yesterday after he actually denied allegations of having ties with business associates connected to his son, Hunter Biden. It's kind of like, here we go again. (laughs) Joe Biden denying the uh, Biden family business. This was during a conference, uh, a press conference at the White House. New York Post reporter Stephen Nelson asked President Biden, if he would explain to the American people ahead of a potential impeachment inquiry, why he, quote, interacted with so many of his son and brother's foreign business associates. Here's the president's response. I'll President talk to Biden you more after the and also China. President Biden on Ukraine and also China. Uh, there is polling by the Associated Press that shows that almost 70 percent of Americans, including 40 percent of Democrats, believe that you acted either illegally or unethically in regards to your family's business interests. Can you explain to the Americans, uh, to Americans admit this impeachment inquiry, why you interacted with so many of your son and brother's foreign business associates? I'm not going to comment that I did not, and it's just a bunch of lies. You didn't interact with many of their business associates? 
I did not. They're what? lies. What's the 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 now, we've learned a lot about Joe Biden when he was vice president. He used email aliases, private email addresses to communicate with his son, Hunter, and Hunter's business associates hundreds and hundreds of times, according to new records released by the House Ways and Means Committee. Nearly 70% of Americans, including 40% of the Democrats, believe that Joe Biden acted unethically or illegally when it came to his family's business interest. House Republican leaders revealed that they hope to hold a formal vote, maybe next week, on a measure that would formally initiate an impeachment inquiry into the president, which would give them uh, more authority, uh, more leeway, uh, and, and more tools to investigate Joe Biden. The revelation that Congress may soon consider impeachment comes shortly after House Oversight Committee James Comer released subpoenaed bank records showing an entity owned by Hunter Biden made direct monthly payments to Joe Biden. Let that sink in now. Joe Biden says he knows nothing about his son's business, that he has uh, no ties with business associates, yet the House Oversight Committee just released bank records that show Biden was being paid monthly from one of his son's businesses. You can imagine critics uh, across social media and what their response to Joe Biden once again, after this information has been released, once again denying any involvement. Senator Mike Lee from Utah wrote, come on, man, jokingly using the phrase, you know, that Biden often uses himself. The Spectator contributing editor Stephen Miller invited followers to watch with uh, watch this with the sound off, appearing to imply something can be gleaned from Biden's body language in the video. Republican Strategic Communications Director Tommy uh, Pigott said, the evidence shows Biden met with at least 14 of Hunter's associates over 16 occasions from 2010 to 2018. Hunter put him on the speakerphone during meetings at least two dozen times. He was on hundreds of emails using an alias with one of Hunter's associates. You know, the fact that Joe Biden had all these emails and these aliases shows you that he was trying to hide something, doesn't it? Does that not just cry, I'm guilty? Why, why would you have anonymous or, or aliases uh, as far as emails go? If you weren't doing anything wrong, real clear investigation, senior writer, Mark Hemingway wrote, we've gone from Biden never talked to Hunter and his partners to, he did talk to them, but not about business to, well, he did talk to them about business, but didn't get paid. And now we're back to, he never talked to them at all. It's a good, good point. Uh, outkick writer, Ian Miller wrote, Put aside the fact that Biden's struggling so much here, we already know that he's interacted with Hunter's business associates, making this yet another blatant lie. Wonder when the media fact checkers will correct this. Well, I, I doubt you'll be hearing uh, any any corrections from some of the mainstream media. Uh, Free Beacon reporter Joe Gabrielle Simonson argued that Biden's statement in the exchange was the most brazen lie Biden has ever told and is actually at odds with what his defenders in Congress and the White House say on almost a daily basis. And finally, Twitchy's Doug Powers quipped, that's a lie, he said, while running away so nobody could follow up. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. I'd love to get your comments. Uh, is Joe Biden going to be impeached? You think that the GOP in the U.S. House of Representatives, you think they have the backbone to finally do this? Are, are they go, are they going to next week vote on this impeachment inquiry? Love to get your take on it. Send me uh, send me your comments on the Truth Text Line eight six four four seven seven fifty six thirty nine. You can also leave a voicemail if you'd like, and uh, your emails are welcome. Joey at joeyhudson dot com. An odd and Sad report coming out of Virginia at a YMCA there. They've been hit with a $20 million lawsuit over the death of a five-year-old boy who drowned in the deep end of a crowded pool, allegedly manned by one lifeguard who 
was on her phone at the time. Uh, now, again, this is a sad story, but one that needs to something needs to be learned from this. The the devastated mom of little Austin Wingo Jr. is accusing the Pulaski County YMCA of having just one lifeguard and three child care workers present to supervise at least 38 kids, ages 5 to 10, swimming this, this afternoon when her son died in 2021. She filed suit this week. While Wingo w- uh, couldn't swim, uh, he was in the pool, the lifeguard, quote, began to look at what is thought to be her cellular phone while there were no fewer than 34 program children in the pool, according to the Pulaski County Court suit from Contessa Gallimore. The boy frantically fought for his life in eight feet of water while trying to regain the side of the pool before he lost his life and went under the water approximately 30, 36 feet in front of the lifeguard stand without being noticed by any staff, according to the court papers. The boy and the other children were enrolled in the Wyatt Cell Child Care Program. They were taken swimming during a virtual learning day during COVID. This, again, was in December of 2021, according to the suit. Wingo didn't know how to swim, but no one asked his parents or gave him a test to see what his capabilities were, and he wasn't given any flotation devices upon getting into the pool, according to the uh, uh, suit. Uh, they go on to describe how he lost his grip on the side of the pool and be- began to struggle all again within direct view of the lifeguard, but no one noticed him, quote, struggling to stay above water, the suit claims. The three child care workers were not properly stationed on the pool deck so as to be able to supervise all the children in the pool, the filings claim. One worker even, quote, abandoned her post on the pool deck while another was helping a child with their goggles, and the third wasn't paying attention to the deep end. Unfortunately, uh, it was it was it wasn't until two other children noticed that young Wingo was floating face down underwater when the staff finally took some action. Uh, according to the suit, still they did not attempt to rescue Wingo by performing CPR on him, and the lifeguard didn't know where the defibrillator was, causing a delay in providing emergency care to the child. The lawsuit alleges when emergency workers arrived, they took Wingo to the hospital where they found at least one of his lungs was completely full of water. Unfortunately, he died of his injuries that night. A special prosecutor investigated the incident, finding that the death was not intentional and that there was no criminal negligence. Uh, Wingo's family lawyer said that while they know how important YMCAs are in their communities, someone has to be held accountable, they say. Society demands accountability for this little boy who will never experience a full life. Many of the prior employees of the YMCA have moved on, something Austin will never do. So this lawsuit represents the family's effort to seek justice for the loss of their son and to obtain the accountability they deserve. Uh, the lawyers say that uh, they have brought claims of gross, uh, gross negligence against the YMCA, the YMCA director, the lifeguard, and the child care workers. The suit says that as Wingo was struggling for his life in full view of where the lifeguard was, she was on her cell phone. The suit seeks $15 million in com- compensatory damages and another $5 million in punitive uh, or punishment damages. Polanski County YMCA CEO Dave Atkins said that they were devastated by young Wingo's death. And, you know, this is something that both sides will never get over. Obviously, this family will never get over losing their young child. Uh, and, and, yes, it, it appears that the that the young lifeguards were negligent, but they'll never get over losing seeing that child die in front of them either. Do you believe that that society is too litigious now? I mean, it does appear this was an accident, a horrible accident, an accident that could have been avoided probably. But does it deserve to probably? Uh, possibly put the YMCA out, YMCA out of business, twenty million dollars. Eight six four four seven seven Joey. Eight six four four seven seven fifty six thirty nine. An Ohio woman was found guilty of throwing a piping hot 
burrito bowl in the face of a Chipotle employee. She had her jail time lessened after agreeing to a kind of unusual sentence from a very creative judge. I'll give you the details after I tell you about my PhD weight loss and nutrition. Three years ago, fortunately, I was introduced to Dr. Ashley Lucas, founder of the PhD weight loss and nutrition program. I lost 30 pounds within a matter of just a few months, and I've been able to maintain that weight loss for over three years now. Most of us, of course, focus on losing the weight because that's how you judge the success or failure of a weight loss program. And that's, that's a good thing, but there's also a lot of non-scale victories involved with PhD weight loss and nutrition because it's based on the science of nutrition. They teach you all about food, what to eat, when to eat and how to eat. They talk with you and teach you how your body responds to certain foods. And that's why PhD weight loss and nutrition is different than some of the fad diets. Yes, you're going to lose the weight. Yes, you can lose it pretty quickly. But because this is a lifestyle change and not really a a diet, you'll be able to, to maintain that weight loss for the rest of your life. And that's part of their maintenance program. They're not going to desert you. They'll be with you for the rest of your life. Two years, uh, th- three years later, I still feel great. I still know what I can eat when I can eat. I still get in a little chocolate every now and then. I'm a chocoholic. I, I admit it. Uh, I don't deprive myself of foods I, that I enjoy. I just know how to, how to uh, limit them now. You will too if you'll get started on the program now. And I know what you're thinking. Well, Christmas is just a few weeks off. Now's a great time to go ahead and call and get it set up. 864-252-4925. Set up your initial consultation today. 864-252-4925 online at myphdweightloss.com. PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. So an Ohio woman was found guilty of throwing a very, very hot burrito bowl in the face of a restaurant employee, and she's had her jail time lessened after agreeing to actually work at a fast food chain as part of her sentencing arrangement. Rosemary Haynes, she's 39 years old, was found guilty last week of assault after violently throwing her food at Emily Russell, who was working behind the counter when Haynes launched her obscene caught-on-video attack. Parma Municipal Judge Timothy Gilligan said during the sentencing, you didn't get your burrito bowl the way you like it, and this is how you respond? This is not Real Housewives of Parma. This behavior is not acceptable, he said. Hain told the court and Russell that she was sorry for her actions before going on to say that the food that she was given looked disgusting. (laughs) She said, if I showed you how my food looked and how my food looked a week later from that same restaurant, it's disgusting looking, she said. Video taken of this uh, September assault, which also went viral online, was played during Hain's hearing. Hain can be seen in the clip slamming her order down on the counter while yelling at Russell for nearly a, a minute. You can you can see some of the other customers not quite sure what's going on. And from there, just a, a, a mere uh, a few feet away, Hain launches the burrito bowl at Russell's face, causing the other diners to gasp. The judge said, I bet you won't be happy with the food you're going to get in the, in the jail. He uh, sentenced Hain to 180 days in jail and suspended 90 of those days, saying he hopes to teach her a sense of empathy and then made a bizarre offer. Uh, Gillen told Hain that he would uh, give her 60 days jail credit if she agreed to work at least 20 hours a week at a fast food restaurant for two months. Gilligan said, so I thought, why should the city taxpayers pay for her and feed her for 90 days in jail if I can teach her a sense of empathy. I also hope this deters others from this type of behavior, the judge said. Hain took him up on the offer, said that she planned to get a job at a restaurant. It's unclear where that job will be and when she'll start work. Russell, who has since found a job elsewhere following the traumatic incident, told the news outlet that she found the sentence fair. She said she didn't get a slap on the wrist. 
Following the sentencing, a spokesperson for Chipotle told the Post, the health and safety of our employees is our greatest priority, and we're pleased to see justice served for any individual that does not treat our team members with respect that they deserve. Kind of an unusual sentence, isn't it? But she's going to get to see what it's like on the other side of that counter. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Love to get your text messages. You think more judges should do these types of sentences rather than just putting someone in jail? Do something that might teach them, teach them a lesson possibly? On the truth text line, Tony writes, Joey, the playoff committee has never liked the ACC and that's the real reason they left out FSU. They wanted an SEC team in it, and Alabama beating Georgia was their scapegoat to put Alabama in it. This, of course, in response to the story that uh, FSU uh, was ranked number five, even though they're undefeated. Alabama was number four, and they'd lost one game during the regular season. Created quite, quite the stir in college football. Thank you, Tony, for your text. Uh, Bob from Little Rock. Boy, this is a nice one. Bob says, uh, Joey, it's just after four in the morning in Arkansas when I listen to your new podcast episode. Starting my day in prayer, followed by the Joey Hudson Show, is simply the best. We notice that your broadcasts are getting longer and hope this will continue. As always, may God bless you today, tomorrow, and forever. Bob from Little Rock. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. And, Bob, I'm so happy to, to hear that, you, uh, that you're still part of my listener family. Uh, you, you've been, been a regular. Thank you for that. Uh, your comments are welcome on the truth text line as well. 864-477-5639. Texter writes, Joey, can you imagine Liz Cheney as a presidential candidate? Nikki and now possibly Liz. What a nightmare. Liz Cheney's not going to run. I know she keeps flirt, flirting with the idea of possibly getting in the race. I, I don't even think Liz Cheney could be, uh, I mean, she, she could, can't even be elected in her own home state. I don't think she has a chance nationwide. Uh, Our positive text of the day says, I know for sure that what we dwell on is who we become. God bless. That is a true statement. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Leave me a a, uh, quick voice message. Send me a text. Send me an email, joey at joeyhudson.com. There's quite the controversy brewing in the Florida GOP. Have you heard this story? Uh, I I had a a texter send it to me saying, I hope you're going to uh, talk about this. I I don't know how you don't talk about this story. Florida Republican political circles were shocked last week when state GOP leader Christian Ziegler was accused of sexual assault against a woman with whom he and his wife, Bridget Ziegler, had planned a three-way sexual encounter. Is the name Bridget Ziegler familiar? I'll tell you why in just a moment. Portions of today's show brought to you by Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Are you tired of buying appliances from inexperienced sales staff with no appliance knowledge? Well, I understand there's a lot of different options. There's different brands, features. It's tough to figure it out, isn't it? And if you go to one of the big box stores, all they're going to do is point you to aisle 39 or whatever and say, you know, take a look at it, and you're going to stand there staring at a row of uh, refrigerators. And you can't afford to buy the wrong ones because they're expensive. And what you buy, you're going to probably you're going to want to use, you hope it's going to last 10, 15 years or more. Well, when you go to Discounted Appliance Warehouse, the team there, they have the knowledge that you need that you're going to have confidence to make the right purchase. They'll show you around the warehouse, over 11,000 square feet, just uh, slam-packed with new appliances waiting for you. They'll help you find the ideal solution, and with expert uh, their expert installation, their award-winning service department, and their extended warranties, they'll have you covered well beyond the sale. You're more than just a credit card swipe at Discounted Appliance Warehouse. It's where I buy all of my appliances. I hope you'll check them out, too. Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're in Pickens, and online at DAWPickens.com, DAWPickens.com. All right, so listen closely here now, okay, <laughs> because... This is a web that is being uh, that has been woven and is, continues to, to be disclosed within the Florida GOP circles. Here's what we know based on the Herald Tribune reports. 
Kristen Ziegler, now keep in mind, has not been charged with any crimes yet and may not be. Who knows? But the investigation is ongoing and police have filed an affidavit seeking access to his Google accounts after he admitted that he had uploaded a video that he had made of this encounter. Ziegler's attorney has said that the charges are politically motivated and that he will be exonerated. But Governor Ron DeSantis and other top Florida elected officials have asked Mr. Ziegler to step down as Florida Republican Party chair. Christian and Bridget Ziegler, his wife, are well known as a Republican power couple and they're staunch advocates for morality and conservative principles in Florida political circles. While he moved upward from Sarasota County Commissioner to Florida Republican Party Chair, his wife fought against COVID-19 measures in schools, co-founded this national organization dedicated to expunging what it considered offensive material from classrooms and stood behind Governor DeSantis as he signed the Parents' Bill of Rights bill. This is what the critics call the Don't Say Gay bill based on her work into, uh, that she had put into to this law. So here's what we know about the wife, Bridget Ziegler. She's 41, born in Illinois. Back in the fall of 2010, she visited her retired parents in Sarasota, Florida. Loved it. Ended up staying, uh, working at, uh, uh, at several different jobs there, rising up through various insurance companies for the next 10 years. She also met Christian Ziegler, who was an up-and-coming politician, and they got married. The Ziegler's have three daughters. In 2014, Christian suggested that his wife run for the Sarasota School Board, which she did. Then Governor Rick Scott appointed her to an open position. She won a four-year term later that year. Bridget Ziegler then spent the next seven years as one of the few conservatives on the school board. She, uh, she, she led the fight on a lot of different issues, quite often losing votes because uh, they didn't have enough conservatives on the board. She joined other frustrated conservative school board members in 2015 to form the Florida Coalition of School Board Members as a rival to the Florida School Boards Association. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Ziegler advocated to drop the mask mandates in Sarasota County Schools, and she led to the creation of Moms for Liberty. You familiar with this group? Moms for Liberty, it's, it's a, become a national organization. It was incorporated in 2021 by Ziegler, former Bavard County School Board member Tina Deskovich, and former Indian River County School Board member Tiffany Justice. The, the three ladies, they've toured the country uh, with their Moms for Liberty organization. Their goal was to empower parents and to help them better understand how school districts operate and how to influence district policies. Moms for Liberty leaders have said that the group is nonpartisan, uh, but it is grounded in conservative values, they admit. And, uh, of course, all three of the founders have Republican ties. They, um, uh, they grew rapidly into a national organization. They have 285 chapters in 45 states as of this past summer, with chapters in 32 counties in Florida alone. Moms for Liberty has seen great success and getting conservative members onto school boards all around the nation, teaching others how to speak up at school board meetings and helping restrict transgender rights and teaching about the, 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 so, the uh, critical race theory in schools and universities. Moms for Liberty has been at the forefront of some of the recent movement to ban books in school classrooms and in libraries. Critics of Moms for Liberty say that, uh, that they are bigoted, that they're homophobic, that they're racist, fear-mongering. In June of this year, the Southern po uh, Poverty Law Center labeled Moms for Liberty extremists and anti-government. Ms. Ziegler, uh, we're told, left the organization in the spring of 2021 to concentrate on some of her other obligations. She's defended the group but is no longer affiliated with it, and she's not listed as one of the founders on the Moms for Liberty website. So both the Ziegler's, Bridget Ziegler and her, uh, her husband have, um, have close ties with Ron DeSantis' campaign as well. She helped draft the original bill of the parental rights and education in 2019. Uh, she worked very closely with other organizations to try to lobby and get this uh, done. 
She's been a very outspoken critic of transgender students using restrooms that match their uh, gender identities. When Governor DeSantis signed the bill, again, this is the uh, don't say gay bill that that a lot of the uh, liberals have have uh, have been very critical of. Uh, you can see in a photo of her standing behind Governor DeSantis while he was signing the bill. So back to what is her husband, Kristen Ziegler, what is he accused of? Well, according to a police affidavit, a Sarasota woman that Ziegler has known for 20 years said that she was sexually assaulted on October the 2nd at her apartment. Uh, according to the affidavit, the victim and Christian Ziegler agreed to have a sexual encounter that included Christian's wife, Bridget Ziegler. When the victim learned that Bridget could not make it, she changed her mind and canceled with Christian. According to the complaint, though, he showed up anyway, entered her apartment, and allegedly assaulted her. Ziegler has said the sexual encounter was consensual. Both the woman and Bridget Ziegler have admitted to detectives that there was a previous sexual encounter between the three of them more, more than a year ago. Police uh, have recorded phone calls and messages between Christian Ziegler and the woman talking about that day in which Ziegler denied assaulting her and are seeking files from his Google account where he says that he uploaded video of the encounter. Wow. What a story, huh? The, the, again, the, the webs that people weave for themselves. It, it'll be uh, interesting to see if, in fact, he resigns. That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Thanks for joining me in the Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose the weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined our mailing list yet, visit my website, joeyhudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails with the most up-to-date news. Appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Keep your comments coming via the Truth text line, 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. And keep those emails coming to joey at joeyhudson.com. Hope you have a good rest of your day. We're back tomorrow. Until then, remember, God's got this. He's still in control. <laughs>